We are one day out from our new featured program and a new Legend and Flashback collection. Yesterday, we talked about the 15 American League bosses in the program. Today, we got some more news. So I'm going to go through some of the news that we found out so far. And after we go through that, we're going to hop on into our featured program cards that we found out so far and go through my initial picks and who I think will be the best in the National League. Let's hop right into it because we got a lot to talk about today. First of all, if you are just hopping onto the game, Roberto Clemente has a player program for Roberto Clemente Day. And as you see, he has a second 99 overall. I know some people have not loved the idea of a second 99 of Clemente. I get that. But this is basically a straight upgrade from the original 99 we got. And this is definitely a precedent setter for other legends that already have 99s. In case it has not been made abundantly clear for players like Ken Griffey Jr., Willie Mays, they will likely get a second 99 that's maybe a Retro Finance or some other series that is really stacked on the attributes. And this is the most viable Roberto Clemente that we have had Ozzy ever in the span of the last two years. He actually brings great power versus left. And versus righties, when he gets higher parallel, he's going to touch into the 90s, which will make him a very nice corner outfield option. But people use Clemente for being a contact type hitter the elite defense, and pretty middle-of-the-road speed and power. But him getting that increase in power means he's going to last longer into the end game. It will be a very viable outfielder for the time being. And I'm glad that they did this because Roberto Clemente had always been a legend that wasn't really used as much as he could. And also, just a quick FYI, if you complete the program, they do include text in the game about collecting it. You can only collect it once. So if you're like me and have this program done, do not collect it yet, or you have an experience like the Extreme Awards where you collect them, in the current program and you can't collect them again so make sure you collect it when you really need the xp next we hop over to mlb the show's twitter and we got a little bit of a teaser on who our legend and flashback award is going to be tomorrow and as you see here this looks like it's likely an infielder from the image this image is taken in citizens bank park the phillies field in terms of a legend and flashback collection i had a couple guesses of like a hannes wagner i think shortstop catcher or maybe starting pitcher were the three positions that were most likely and it seems like right here, we've got a player wearing sunglasses at shortstop in Philadelphia. And one of my low-key guesses for a player was none other than Jimmy Rollins. And as you see, I took a screenshot trying to replicate it. I know I did this once before with Johnny Cueto in the Reds. I thought we were getting Rob Dibble, but it ended up being Johnny Cueto. But this is what I'm feeling a little bit better with. He's got the sunglasses on. Looks like it's a shortstop throwing animation, especially where the image is placed. And Jimmy Rollins makes a lot of sense. He's a lot like Andrew McCutcheon, where he's had 99s or at least close to 99 overall players before. They haven't been super top tier. But now that we have Retro Finest as a series in this game, someone like Jimmy Rollins could get the Andrew McCutcheon treatment where he's way better than we expect. And now you get a top tier shortstop with great defense, speed, switch hitting and especially if they choose his mvp year great power so this looks like it could be a very good card for a collection and i think very likely especially shortstop which is pretty weak right now i think ernie banks and chipper are the big two right now jimmy rollins at short should be top tier and i think will be a great option for people so i'm ecstatic for a jimmy rollins if it happens to be him and last but definitely not least before we hop into our bosses you see we had 99 edgar martinez's attributes shown today but dude, Yayo showed this on his Twitter before. Look at the hitting attributes. The maxed out contact, 106 and 114 power is great. First and third base are positions you could probably get away with the worst defense. So having silver fielding there on the base card is more than fine. But if you parallel five this card, he's actually be an elite hitter. And he could creep up to gold defense at third base where the defense may matter. So I think that this is actually a really nice card. And again, like I've been mentioning with these program cards, a lot of these cards are going to be very, very good and likely the best players that we've ever had for majority of these players. So Edgar Martinez getting a very viable card is great. Definitely is more foreshadowing and how good these cards are going to be in this program like I've been mentioning a ton. Now, if you watch yesterday's video, we're going to talk about the featured program bosses in the NL, the ones that we have found out so far, the last 15. And give my first initial thoughts and likely picks as we see just the screenshots and maybe some of the other players' attributes. And we talked about this NL East pack a bit, but I want to go into more detail on it today. This division seems like a great division. You know, Burnett and Glavin will likely be good starters. Hank Aaron will probably be great at whatever position he needs to play for your team. And Andre Dawson could be a great corner outfield, center field option. And Mike Schmidt will have some attributes. 
I don't know if people like his swing animation, but he will have some attributes for a third baseman. But you look at all these cards based off of my experience of playing this game, I think Hank Aaron and Tom Gladden will probably be the big two to pick in this pack. All the cards are definitely viable, and I think there's more attractiveness to these players. Just that someone like Mike Schmidt usually is someone who's liked, so I don't expect people to pick him much. But everyone else is viable. AJ Burnett will be more of a velocity type pitcher. He's not going to have outlier, but he probably won't have great control. He'll have a higher velo fastball. And he's not going to be too absurd on the pitch mix. I'm picturing like a four seam and a sinker and a knuckle curve. Maybe you'll have a slider. I don't know. But he will be a viable starter if you're looking for someone in that back end of the rotation to help you out. Hank Aaron, I, I don't know how I feel about this because if he's included in a program with these other cards, I don't think Hank will be to a level like 99 was last year. I think he'll be very, very good for right now and it might leave the room open for an even better 99 like Retro Finest or Milestone like last year where he's super stacked. So... I'm picturing like 110 to 125 attributes, you know, in that range. You'll probably have some positional versatility being able to play all over the outfield and first base for sure. But there is a shot he gets second base and third base in secondaries because he played a fair amount of his career in those secondaries. We have a guy like Orhe Posada getting a secondary who played one game at second base. So Hank Aaron might have some positional versatility, which would be very valuable. Andre Dawson, I think, will end up being a primary center fielder. I think that's what his 99 was the other year. And I think he would be a nice, well-rounded hitting option. I think he'll have more contact and power. But I could picture, like, you know, like, High 110s, 120s on the contact, 100 to 115 on the power, and then pretty solid speed likely in the 80s or low 90s and diamond fielding. Like, he'll be great. Name-wise, he isn't always the most attractive, but will be a nice outfield option thing, kind of like what Tory Hunter is bringing to the table. Mike Schmidt will probably be really good on the attributes. He'll have diamond fielding at third. He'll probably have great contact and power, mainly versus lefties at least. It's just the thing that slows down Mike Schmidt is that people don't like his swing animation. Is He seems like he strides very late in his swing, and for many people, it's very tough to hit with him. But he might have some nice secondaries like shortstop like he normally gets on a 99. So it could be a versatile card if a card that can play third and short. And then Tom Glavin, if you use his 96, 97, whichever overall it was, six series, I think you will like this 99. He's likely going to have better attributes, like better walks per nine, better hits per nine, and all that, which would be very nice. Basically an upgraded Gla Glavin. Never really gotten a 99 version of him before, so I think he'll be an underrated starter to pick in the program. Then today, we had our NL Central announce, and I think we've got a nice mix of cards in this NL Central. Jason Bay might be a really stacked hitting left field, right field option for your outfield. He hasn't gotten a 99 in the show yet. I think he could be a very fun righty corner outfielder with some really juiced hitting and likely like silver, maybe low gold fielding. I'm glad he's getting a 99. He should be a fun one. Ozzy Smith. I think we kind of have a good idea of what we're going to get out of an Ozzy Smith. I don't think he's actually had a pure 99 before. Pretty solid on the contact, like above 110 likely we'll see. Very low on the power, kind of to the level of like what a Richie Ashburn looks like. Elite fielding and solid speed at short. I will say, this is the time to release a 99 version of him because at least he'd be like a somewhat viable shortstop. But definitely not a popular pick because power is something that people love. He's not going to bring much. But again, we'll be an underused and underrated shortstop if you're one of those people that likes to use underrated players. Ryan Sandberg should be a very fun card. He had a SIG series in the past that some people really liked. If they find a way to juice his power a little bit more, they can give this man like near like 120 plus on the contact. Maybe d touching the hundreds on the power, kind of like the new Roberto Clemente card we got. Maybe even a little bit more than that with diamond defense at second. Very fun second base option that might not be a popular pick overall in the game, but will be a very good one at this current state in the game. And then Prince Fielder, I am personally excited for because he had a 99 last year, which was his home run derby card. But if you remember the home run derby card, he was a little lower in the contact and the stacked power. I want to see Prince Fielder get a card, nice contact, and a little bit more well-rounded on the power. Like he might mash righties on the power, but still be very good versus left on the power. I think in terms of primary first baseman, he will be a great pick. Like especially with how good Edgar Martinez is, I think they're going to make Prince really good. And he would definitely be the more power hitter type, even though Edgar Martinez is more of the contact type. And then Joe Morgan, getting a 99, he's always a fun second base option with high contact, pretty good power, 
99 speed and great defense. And it, since he's a shorter player who crowds have played a bit, would be a very nice second baseman option as well. For me, I think the picks for many will either be Prince Fielder first base or Ryan Sandberg or Joe Morgan at second. I think just those will be the more popular picks. But Jason Bay would also be great if you need that corner outfielder. I think anyone's a pick really other than Ozzie Smith unless they find a way to juice his power. And since I wanted to get this video out for you, unfortunately, we do not know who the West players are as of right now. I think we'll find out probably within the next hour or two on their Twitter. Hopefully at some point today, they tweet it out. I think the NL West will follow a similar theme. I can picture like a Tony Gwynn for the Padres and like Loki, maybe a Kirk Gibson for the Dodgers or something like that in that NL West with a bunch of pretty solid players. I mentioned to see if we get some pitching in this division because you now we didn't see that much pitching in the rest of the NL. Mainly the NL Central, there wasn't any. And I could picture maybe a couple teams getting some pitching out West. I'm also interested to see, like, what? Did the Rockies get, like, a Todd Hell in? But the point I want to make in this program is that there are 30 cards, and there's a lot of options and avenues for people to go in choosing players, which is always good for the game. I think once this program drops, you'll really start to see some variety in lineups. Because for a while, we started to see a lot of same old, same old. I think you'll start to see a new change. Refreshed lineups in the game, which I think is always good for the game. Who, what do you think of all the news in MLB The Show 22 that has come out today? I appreciate you all watching. I was watching all the COD MW2 news today, and I'm really excited to play that. Make sure you sub over to the, the second channel that I have. That I plan on making some other content on other games over there. So if you want to see more of me, you should go sub to that other channel down there. But I appreciate you all watching this video with me today. And I'll see you all again tomorrow where we'll go through that Legend and Flashback collection and all of the bosses that we find out then. You have a great rest of your day. I'll see you all again on the next one. Deuces.